Simple question to answer, not. Today's question comes from um, a woman named Jessica, and her question is, simple question to answer, not. It's called, how do I find clients? So my answer to Jessica is, I, I would advise you to start read, 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 read everything you can read. So that means a variety of topics, time management, psychology, safety, ethics, business practices, trends in organizing, sales, branding advice, um, and how to become an entrepreneur. So read a variety of topics. Next, I would probably tell you to start reading a bunch of blogs that are related to organizing and productivity. Um, focus on a few topics that interest you. Doesn't mean that you're going to be married to these topics for the rest of your career, but maybe you're thinking that you want to specialize in relocations or uh, organizing and decluttering after grief. You know, somebody passes away, their spouse needs help, they feel lonely, you go in and help in grieving situations. Or downsizing seniors, or working with children with ADHD, or working with postdocs, or you know, whatever, whatever interests you. So read blogs related to those uh, topics. Next, I would say use social media in a very mindful manner. Every few years, something new comes along and I've been doing this since dinosaurs roamed the earth. So <laughs> social media wasn't an option back then. It was just good old fashioned newsletters and LinkedIn. And I think there are pros and cons to using social media. The good news is it's instant and it's free. It's an investment of your time. But the bad news is it changes every few years and you're kind of like their puppet, right? If, you're so, if they change the rules, all of your material goes away. So I tell people, make sure that you have a blog or something that you own. The content is posted there because that's yours forever. Um, you might want to start a newsletter. And if you don't want to start one, read one. Read a variety of people's newsletters just to see what they're cranking out every month. And then network. It's really important that you build relationships with other organizers near you. Um, that kind of gives you a feel for what they're working on. Maybe you can collaborate and let them know, hey, I'm not working so much yet. If you need extra hands-on help, I'm available as a subcontractor. And in addition to that, network with organizers outside your location. The reason for that is because your competitors colleagues may not want to spill the beans and tell you everything that it took them years and years to learn. So they, you might be uh, luckier if you contact somebody, you know, six states away or across the country for information. Um, you can also network by joining like-minded professionals. So some of the groups that come to mind are the National Association of Professional Organizers, the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, the National Association of Move Managers, um, and the, uh, direct, uh, the Daily Money Managers. Those are just a few groups that you might explore. You might wanna start by attending a few conferences and actually um, socializing with people rather than running to your room and keeping to yourself when you're at these networking events. I also would say, hopping back to social media for a few minutes, don't be scared to share your colleagues' things on social media. There are people that I turn to on, say, Twitter, for example. I know that they skim other people's stuff and promote it, right? So you could say, hey, I just wrote a blog post. I'm brand new. If you have a chance, would you put this out on your Twitter or would you engage with me on LinkedIn? I think people in the organizing industry are extremely friendly and very likely to do that for you. Create a pocket speech. This was something that I would say helped me immensely when I started. And a pocket speech is something that you kind of have pre-written and pretty well memorized. You could do it off the top of your head. And I've gotten really fortunate by having pocket speeches ready to roll. I had a colleague who got strep throat and couldn't keep one of her speaking engagements and she called me at the last minute and said, here's the deal, these people are paying this, I cannot go there, can you do this? I said, absolutely. I show up, I got, of course, paid for the engagement and I had clients contact me, um, people from the audience contacted me, later became clients. I also got more speaking engagements from doing that one engagement. So have a pocket speech ready to roll. 
Um, be strategic when you're building your website. If you're going to find clients in any way, I'd say your website is gonna do most of the talking for you. So you want a website that projects who you really are. Don't use super formal language if you're a very, not a very formal person. You have to be true and authentic. When people go to your website, they're going to wanna to know who's coming into their home to you know, help them sort through personal papers or whatever, whatever the job requires. I would also say related to authenticity is if you're going to be on Instagram, it is so tempting to use a bunch of really beautiful photos that you paid for, you know, stock photos that are stylized and have this absolutely spectacular looking Instagram account. That might work against you though. And the reason I say that is because if somebody's on a budget and they live in a not so glam, you know, giant house where all the bath towels are the same color and everything's picture perfect, they might feel rather intimidated calling you. So if you can at least sprinkle in your own work with some of these um, stock photos, I think that's a better approach. Don't, misre don't misrepresent the work that you're doing with real life clients. One other thing is most of us in the industry are not organizing 10,000 square foot homes, so it's okay to do some smaller normal homes. And that's my advice for how do you find clients. Really easy, right? Not. <laughs> Takes a while. All right, Jessica, so I guess to condense all of that, if you just want the down and dirty version, I would say create a pocket speech. Um, you have to be okay. You have to check your ego at the door because you have to realize they're not calling you in first, right? You're filling in for somebody. That's okay. Um, and be strategic on social media. Be authentic. If you enjoyed the tips and the frequently asked questions that I'm sharing, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Or feel free to email me, gthomas at metropolitanorganizing.com. Thanks.